All right, what's up guys? Vivi back with another video. Uh, this time we're going to be revisiting Black Yellow, Charlotte Linlin. Um, so, where to start? So number one, uh, I just want to say that we have already covered a list where I, I kind of went, went over a deck tech of the direction I think the deck should go. A little bit of theory crafting on why we go, what we go. And we're going to be going over about seven black and yellow decks today. Seven different variations, and I'm going to go over the, the transitions that were made along the way that me and one of my friends here at Locals uh, took to a few tournaments. Unfortunately, I was not able to play in the tournaments. I was at them with, uh, with the player who did play, so I got to oversee some of the games. Uh, but I did not get to play myself. I had to leave early on both events, unfortunately. I, I am going to be playing this, this list very soon, or a similar list to what you see on the screen right now. But I just want to uh, shout out uh, Gamer Gabbers 116 for recommending this list. Okay, I believe that's who it was who recommended the list. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that's who it was. But he, he was saying to check it out. And, and I, at first, I was very skeptical. I was very skeptical. Like, ah, I don't know, man. You know, there's a lot of investment into this ability. You're, 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 you're investing four Dawn to swing for seven with your leader and discarding a card, only able to work at, at one life just to gain a life. Okay, that ability is very strong, and there's a reason it costs seven. So, all right, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. Enough rambling about that. Um, so, the list you see on your screen, <clears throat> excuse me, is the first rendition. Okay, it, I have gone, I have come a long ways since here. Uh, maybe not a long ways, but I've made some very fine-tuned adjustments from here. And so did my friend who who was able to play on my behalf. Okay, so. Like I said, we're, we're going to be going over about seven lists for um, Black, Yellow, Big Mom Pirates, uh, Charlotte Lynn Lynn here. First one is this. So I'm going to read through them very quickly, and then we'll talk about it. Four Surus, four 2K Sanjis, four Fukuro, four Kuzan, four Borsalino, four Katakuri, four Cost, four Hina, four Cost, four Sakazuki, two Charlotte Katakuri, eight Cost, four Big Mom, ten Cost, and then I've got 12 Triggers back here. That's important. Four Six King Pistols, four Thunderbolts, and four Impact Waves. So let's just notice what's going on here, guys. Notice what's going on. I have four triggers that KO a one or less that draw a card no matter what. I have four triggers that KO a four or less. And I have four triggers that KO a five or less. Okay? That is something we need to consider. Because in Black Yellow um, Charlotte Linlin, we are actually putting a lot of cards from the top of our life into our life pool through things like Charlotte Lynn Lynn, the 10 cost, th through her ability, of course. We have ways of continuing to get cards on the top of our life and technically the 2K Sanji, but let's let's not go there. It, it, Sanji and Suru are specifically meant to be 2K counters. That is, that is what they're there for. Yes, they can be used otherwise, but I think you guys get my point. So this was the list I originally uh, cooked up and I got to play test at home. Uh, against some Zoro, and I, I from from the playtesting I was doing, I don't know the skill difference between me and, and the uh, the person I playtest with, uh, but I was eating Zoro up. Now, yes, they didn't really know what to expect with this deck when I first started playing it, and they're like, man, you sure are getting lucky with all the triggers you keep getting. It's like, no, it, I actually just run 12 <laughs> counters in the deck, and on top of that, they also, I, I'm you know, I'm continuously putting more and more cards on the top of my deck and taking life as it comes. Um, so, okay, so uh, where to start? 12 blockers in the deck, a 3, 4, and 5 cost blocker, you know, in Fukuro, Borsalino, and Hina. And then we got some beaters with Charlotte Katakuri 4 cost, Charlotte Katakuri 8 cost, Sakazuki, and Charlotte Linlin, and, and technically Kuzan uh, 4 cost as well. So that's kind of the, that, that was the basis of the deck, okay? That was where we, where we were started, and I still think this list is very strong, by the way. Notice we do have ways of dealing with 10 cost characters with Charlotte Katakuri 8 cost and a Suru, right? We can literally combo Charlotte Katakuri 8 cost with a, with a Suru to take out any character in the game, theoretically, right? And and by the way, for the, for the record, if you have a Suru 2k in your hand and a Sanji 2k in your hand, 
always use the Sanji over Suru. Suru should be the last 2k counter you use in your hand because of her additional utility with cards like Sakazuki and Katakuri and even Thunderbolt if we need to, right? And you can even combo Kuzan 4 cost swinging with Suru to KO anything with Sakazuki or Thunderbolt. I'm, I'm not saying it's going to happen all the time. I'm not even saying it's an efficient way to do things, but it is an option and the more options the better, right? Okay, so let's see how the deck evolved from here. Uh, the, the person that I was playtesting with, they decided to make it a little bit more of their own style. Uh, they, they swapped out the Sanjis with Tashigi. That's not a problem. There, there is no difference there. That's just whatever 2k counter you want. Uh, we still got the four calls, or, the, or excuse me, let me go over it like this. We still have four Subaru, still have four Fukuro, st uh, the, the Sanjis became Tashigi. He went down to two Kuzans and two Katakuris to go up to four uh, Charlotte Cracker. This allowed him to um, have more triggers, right? Four more triggers in the deck. And then four Kuzan, had the four Hina still for the blocker, four Borsalina, of course, four Sakazuki. And instead of going two of the Katakuri, he preferred two of the Isho, which is fine. That also still allows you to KO anything with Sakazuki and Thunderbolt when you combo him with Suru, right? With, the, you know, the minus three cost with Suru, that's five. Now you can KO anything with Sakazuki and Thunderbolt. It becomes a preference thing. And, and one thing I will say is Isho is very strong into decks that, that like to hold a lot of cards in hand, things like uh, Whitebeard. But um, for those who don't know, Whitebeard did, at the time of me recording this, Whitebeard did just receive a fairly strong nerf, right? Three cards were stricted down to a one of in Edward Newgate, uh, Radical Beam, and Four Cost Marco. So, I think there is an argument against Isho now, but he's still a good card. There's no, you know, that, that might just be a preference spot. Anyway, let's keep going. So everything else is the exact same. So go, went down to Kuzan, went down Charlotte, uh, to Charlotte Katakuri four cost to go up four crackers, swapped out Tashigi with Sanji, swapped out um, Katakuri eight cost with Isho eight cost. Um, it's, it's, it, this is the deck that I first saw him play and he performed very well to locals. I think, I believe he went two and one. And it just so happens, the card that I was just talking about for Isho, or the deck I was just talking about in regards to Isho, Whitebeard, is what ended up knocking him out of the tournament to get to, to go undefeated. It was just going to be a you know a six a three round tournament, a local tournament. Um, and in that tournament, he beat a Magellan, he beat a Kuro, and he beat and like I said, and then he went against Whitebeard, took him down last life. It was close, but really the Whitebeard was able to clutch, and he never even drew Isho, unfortunately. Um, so I do think this version of the list is very solid going up the four Charlotte Crackers. I, I think that is potentially an improvement. I just don't know if we need four of them. Okay, from there, he went on, the same player, went on to play, um, excuse me, he went on to edit it to go up to three Isho like this, where he went down a Henna and went up one Isho. And then we ended up adding two Ice Ages, which is something I was kind of messing with to begin with. He took, he, put, he took out Kuzan, the four cost, and put in two Ice Ages. Interesting, you know, interesting idea here. Notice how many triggers we're dealing with. Let me see, I think it says it down here. We're dealing with 18 triggers if this counter is, is correct at the bottom. So, let me see, 4, 8, 12, 16, 18. Yeah, 18 triggers with Charlotte Cracker and all, these, um, all of these events. Now, I will say this. I do not particularly like Charlotte Cracker. Because, okay, obviously the, the strength in him is playing him as a trigger. Yes, you have a higher chance of getting him in this deck with your triggers because of how many cards you can effectively replace off the top of your deck with cards like Charlotte Lin Lin, with cards like, uh, you know, the leader, of course, with Charlotte Katakuri, the four drop, you know, rearranging your top cards and whatnot. It does give you quite a bit of leeway on, on, on knowing, you know, knowing you're going to get some triggers a game, right? But I think 18 might be a little too many. And I think 15 is a more realistic number. And, and on that note, I don't think Charlotte Cracker is that good for what we're trying to do. Yes, he can get double attack very easily in our deck because we do like to take life down to one and then stabilize at one, keep going up life, drop blockers, go up a life, drop a blocker, go up a life, drop, drop a blocker, and continuously take one life every turn, which gives us the chance to trigger things. And we just kind of stabilize at that point if they cannot swing wide enough. However, Charlotte Cracker's uh, making us toss a card from our hand to get the tempo that it gives us. Whereas in that case, I would rather just play, I personally, again, this was the list my friend uh, modified of what, what we were playing. 
And I would rather have just straight up Kuzan four cost personally. Now I'm not saying I should I don't want any Charlotte crackers, but I would rather like yeah every now and then get a nice Charlotte cracker uh, trigger. But I'm not trying to rush my opponent down. I literally want to go as late into the game as possible and get into an attrition war with him where I can give up one life every single turn due to Charlotte Linlin's ability and then just stabilize on, on very strong blocker interactions, right? Uh, and counters, of course. Like, you know, we got four Six King Pistols, four Impact Waves, eight 2K counters. You know, we have a lot going on. Okay. Um, so he, he took this, he modified this list a little further and went with this list to the next tournament. My, again, this is my friend. I was not able to play, unfortunately. I, I will be playing this uh, the Black Yellow Mom list. I'm going to show you the deck that I'll be playing soon. So he modified it further. He said, you know what? I don't want any hennas. I just want as many triggers as I can afford. So he took out the henna for Charlotte Brule, and he just swapped out the, one of the 2K counters for Struisen, or Struisen, however you say it. That, that's irrelevant. You know, that's just a 2K counter at the end of the day. Um, and, and going up that many triggers, I get why he's going that. Because now he can just drop a trigger out of hand on play to KO something one or less. Still, I'd rather have it as a 2K counter. That's just, a, that's preference. Purely, purely preference. No problems there. The rest of the, of the list stayed unchanged from what we just saw. Everything is the same, except instead of having three hennas, it went three Charlotte Brulee for the cheap three-cost blocker, 1K counter, you know, uh, play this card trigger blocker. And the 2K counter swapped out from uh, Tashigi to Strusen. Okay, uh, he did he did okay with this, but we noticed there was one serious problem we ran into, or at least what he ran into. Uh, I don't I don't you never know when when watching someone play. You know I can only see one side of the game, typically speaking, and how do I say this? I would have done things a little differently than him. I'm not saying he did things wrong. I just think there's always more than one way to do things, and I feel like. Um, there were a few plays that I would have just done a little differently, and, and but he probably couldn't do the things he wanted to because he modified the deck in this way. And um, he ended up losing pretty badly to a Katakuri. Uh, Katakuri ended up being just an absolute hard counter to this, unfortunately. But I, I've got some ideas later that I'm going to talk about that I think can fix it. Because guess what? We have access to all the same cards Katakuri has, right? At the end of the day, we do. So, um, so I'm going to talk about that at the end. But just know that Katakuri was a real, real struggle <laughs> for the deck. Uh, in fact, I think the final score was like seven life for the Katakuri player because they went like big mom, big mom, big mom. And I mean like two seven cost big moms into a 10 cost big mom where it's like, okay, yeah, sure. Just gain three life, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, what do I do? Right. And, and, and that's something we'll have to, I'll have to play test. I'm, I'm working on a, on a, um, uh, I'm working on proxying up a, a category deck so I can play test at home. <clears throat> Excuse me, against this against my list to see what I need to do to at least be competitive. Because I'll always take a 50-50, right? Because then theoretically you can outplay your opponent most of the times. Um, but again, I think I think he got a bad my one of my my play test one one of my um, play test partners. I guess you could say the person who was uh, running this list for me because I couldn't. Um, I think he got a really bad pool. He got both Ice Ages and both and two Sakazukis, not both, two Sakazukis against this list. So it's so it's like okay, in order to take out the big moms, he's he's dropping. I'm having to Ice Age plus Sakazuki. That's six. That's eight Dawn right there, and I'm discarding. So I'm three for wanting myself theoretically, right? Just just not good. Actually, three. Yeah, three, right? Because Sakazuki, discard a card and use Ice Age. So three for wanting yourself. Not ideal. I have to say, and and when I put Ice Age in the deck, I didn't intend for it to be just like this KO spell or event, excuse me. It was more meant to be a absolute last resort. Like, oh, they've dropped a 10 cost character. And yeah, and hey, like I said, one of the characters that um, my buddy KO'd was a 10 cost uh, Charlotte Linlin. So that, okay, yep, that worked as intended. But now what? What's the follow up? So, so he ran into a snag there. And again, I don't know if it, like, I don't know what each player was running. I wasn't able to pay full attention. I'm not sure. I think, I think it could have gone better, but Charlotte Katakuri seemed like a decent um, counter to what we were running. Um, what else? He also played against, I'm having trouble remembering, but that, with this list, he went 0-3. and three. He did not perform well. Um, he did not do well. I missed the first game entirely. I wasn't able to make it. Um, but the second game was against Charlotte Katakuri. 
And let me see, I think I might have it. I talked to him a little bit about it. Um, let's see. I, I think he went against 2-2. Two, two, uh, doo, 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 doo. That's not it. I'm sorry, guys. Hang on one second. Uh, yeah, I don't see... I can't remember what it was. Um, yep, yeah, sorry, guys. I'll, I'll have to, like... If I remember later, I'll tell you. But long story short, he did not um, do well the second time he played with this list right here. Right? Um, and, and, and again, it, I really feel like it was the adjustments he made because I don't feel like Charlotte Brulee is what we need. At first, I thought it was. Remember, if you watch my first video on how to build this, de this deck list, I was like, yeah, run three Charlotte Brulee, run three of the... Uh, the uh, it's not out yet in the West. The... Uh, Nefeltari VV, uh, the black, uh, the black three cost, one K counter, one K power, trigger, play this card blocker. It's like the black version of Charlotte Brulee, basically. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think um, I'm still trying to find that over here on the side. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I I, I can't find it. Unfortunately, uh, his his earlier game that I missed. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, I, I think that there's plenty of uh, um, room for improvement. I think there's plenty of room for improvement in this version of the list. So, then I talked to some people, and I started making a revision, something I just kind of spit up out of nowhere, uh, talking to one of the Rob Lucci players at, at our local... That's, that was who. He lost to a Lucci, a um, Katakuri, and I wasn't there for the first game, but he lost to that as well, and I don't know who it was, unfortunately. It might have actually been Whitebeard, the more I think about it. Um, because this is the last week to play Whitebeard at the time of me recording this. Whitebeard got some substantial nerfs, so this is like the last week to really play him in his, in his uh, true form, <laughs> quote-unquote. So anyway, uh, so this is the new list. This is the new list right here. Notice I've splashed the CP package. Just a little 12-card, a little technically 16 if you count C, uh, 6 King Pistol, but it's really just a little 12-card CP package. You change out the 2K counter for a Khalifa, Okay, it's still a 2k counter at the end of the day. That's all it needs to be. You already have Fakuro in the deck as a 4 of. Why not just swap out the Hina for a Bluno? Bluno in this deck is an absolute juggernaut for what we're doing, guys. Look at our look at our blocker package now. Three uh four Fukuro, four Borsalino, four Bluno. Okay, you can't you literally can't KO Fukuro. You literally can't KO Borsalino unless it's on a trigger. And Bluno, if you KO him, okay, not a problem. We're gonna add a Khalifa to the board, minus twoing someone on your side of the board, you minus twoing the cost of someone and drawing two cards. Or Fukuro is you know, we'll, we'll grab him back as a, as another blocker. You see, like it just ended up being like the just the perfect five cost blocker that we had kind of looked over. Um, other than that, I think this list is very, very strong. Now, one thing I have started working on recently with the list, and, and no, I've not got the chance to try this, but I am like, I'm very certain this is probably very peak. Um, now, th I believe there is a list that won in Georgia. At the time of me recording this, I think it was yesterday, a list, a black and yellow, it didn't win, excuse me, a black and yellow Charlotte Lynn Lynn list, <laughs> Charlotte Lynn Lynn list, got third place in Georgia. As soon as I get my hands on that list, guys, it's I will post it in the comment section and, and, I'll, and I'll do a little you know summary on it uh, if, if I can get my hands on it or if that was even true. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I couldn't find it on um, OP, you know, the deck list site that I use. It was not updated. Um, but this list right here, I think this is on the right track. Um, now, I have since made some small revisions to it where it goes into this, where I just wanted to try out a Charlotte Katakuri and Charlotte Linlin seven cost. I do think, that, and, and of course the Charlotte Cracker, this is a much more refined list as you can see, where it's like, okay, let's, let's like zoom in on this so we can kind of look at it in a little more detail. Um, let me do, can I do one more and it'll move that? Okay, well that's fine. You see the, the all the counters, or excuse me, all the triggers are down here in Big Mom. So this is actually the core of the list at this point. So, Suru and Khalifa are the 2K counters still. We have eight of those. We still have, you know, the 4K counters, the 3K counters. 
We have the four big moms. I went down one Katakuri for a Charlotte Cracker. I went down two Kuzans and a, and a Sakazuki to go up three Charlotte Linlins and then down one Bluno for a Katakuri. I, I don't know if I'm going to keep that, by the way. It was just something I'm going to be playtesting with. And I'll, and I'll try to keep updating this as, as I go. I, I really enjoy it. Now that I've built this list or like, you know, all these different variants, I've been messing around with it. This is easily my favorite list now. Like, th like this deck, I mean. This black, yellow, Charlotte Linlin, Four Emperors, Big Mom Pirates deck is absolutely my favorite list. Um, it is so... This this deck is so much fun to play, guys. Uh, yeah, there's going to be tough matchups. I think Lucci is like a pretty 50-50 matchup when you play correctly. And at the same time, I also think that... Uh, what you call it? Um, I think Whitebeard was a pretty 50-50 matchup as well, but that's probably going to be disappearing over here in the West soon because of the nerfs. But I think the biggest weakness is Charlotte Katakuri, the the, uh, the the leader, the actual deck. And the reason that it felt so unstoppable is because of Charlotte Linlin, the seven cost. It just felt insurmountable, guys. I'm not going to lie. Like like watching it play out, and I'm even going to, I'm actually going to take this, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Take this to there. I, I'm fine with the cracker there. Okay, so this is, this is probably what I would consider the actual bulk of the list, and certain things can be, are malleable. Certain things are just malleable. You can kind of put your preference preference there. Like, for example, for Suru, for Khalifa, for Fukuro, for Borsalino, that's all staple. It, it's not going anywhere, right? Kuzan, Katakuri, and Cracker. Those you can kind of mix and match however you want at the rate of about six cards, right? So in other words, you can go two, two, and two, or you can go th just three and three and not even go one of them, right? Like, just, like in other words, just go like three Charlotte Cracker and three Kuzan, or maybe go one, three, and two like I did here. These six spots are pretty open to whatever your play style, you know, is. Okay, <laughs> however you say that. Um, what else? Uh, Bluno here. I think he should be a four of. I was just putting him down to a, a three of to mess around with a Charlotte Katakuri eight cost. I don't think that's the way to go. Um, the deck is is still very top heavy with uh, the, the six, seven, and tens here. That's ten cards that are six and higher with no counters on them. So your six king pistols have never been more important, right? They, they your your six king pistols cannot be any more important than they are in this deck because you might have to toss a Charlotte Linlin seven cost to survive with your six game pistol or a Charlotte Katakuri or a Kuzan, like whatever, you know, whatever you have to do. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it for the list guys. Let me see if that's all of them. Yeah, that was all of them. I think this is it right here, guys. And in fact, if you want to see the absolute just core version of it, it's probably just this. Right, this is probably just the core. And if you expect to go against more, um, like you need to know your meta better than I do. Like, right? I don't know what you're playing against. If you if you expect to go against a lot of Katakuris, you need to have answers for Katakuri in the form of the seven cost Charlotte Linlin. Um, and 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 probably you got you know you got to fight fire with fire against that deck. So maybe go down a Katakuri and a Kuzan to go up to um, Charlotte Crackers. Now, like I not, like I mentioned before, it's it's hard to run. Like, okay, let me go back to the list. Uh, this list here, it is really hard to run. Um, why won't that, um, this list won't go away. There we go. Uh, the little top part wouldn't go away. It's, it's really hard to run all these discard effects. Like if you're running three Sakazukis, if you're running four, six King pistols, if you're running like four crackers, like I know there's only one in this list. And remember your leader ability has to discard as well to get its effect. Th that is my one problem with Charlotte uh, cracker. Playing him as a four cost from your hand is, I would I would definitely rather just have a Kuzan or a Charlotte Katakuri because from hand he's pretty much trash, right? Like yeah, one K counter that's solid. The the double attack is again it's I don't know if I meant I think I mentioned earlier. If not, I'm just gonna say that if getting double attack is not the biggest deal for us. It's not a bad thing. It you know I'm not saying it's bad, but it's not something that I'm like oh man I really wish I had you know, all of these, uh, you know, double attacks to bring their life down. 
It's like, no, because they're going to draw those cards. I would rather have a banished character, to be completely honest with you, or like Charlotte Linlins, these 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 big drop Charlotte Linlins. So uh, let, me, let me go down like this for now. Just go two Crackers, two Katakuri, and two Kuzans, because that's probably your best bet. Um, and how many triggers did that put us at? That puts us at 16 triggers. Gosh, that's a lot. I do wonder if that's too many. Maybe not. I mean, I know yellow, like I said, we want to have as many triggers as possible, but we also want to have uh, cards that are not weak, um, you know, if they don't hit off trigger, right? We want to have a strong, sturdy core for the deck. Um, but yeah, that's something, again, I'll have to mess with later. But this is probably the direction the deck needs to go right here in front of you, where you've got eight two costs or eight 2K counters, 12 blockers, um, as much Charlotte Linlin as you can get, because you know, that you can squeeze in, because the card is so strong, guys. Like, Charlotte Linlin, the 7 cost and the 10 cost are so strong. The tempo they give, this is, the, the Charlotte Linlin 7 cost in particular is what, like I said earlier, it's what made Katakuri feel unbeatable. Because he would, he just went, okay, you know, Seven Dawn, play Charlotte Linlin, and then he went at nine Dawn, play Charlotte Linlin, and swing with his leader, buff this, buff that, just smash everything, right? He just kind of did his thing. And, you know, you don't want to lose life, so you're just like, okay, well, then you can gain life. Okay, and now ten Dawn, drop Charlotte Linlin. So now he's gained three, and you've lost one. It, it, it just, it feels like, okay, how am I ever supposed to come back from this? It, it's kind of unrealistic, right? So we have to fight fire with fire against Katakuri. Um, yes, he is going to be able to look at the top card of our deck. It is what it is, just like we could do the same with him if we play our Katakuri uh, four cost. But ultimately, I do think the, the biggest distinguishing factor is going to be the, the Charlotte Linlins. If he draws more Charlotte Linlins, him, you know, he, I think he'll have a higher chance of winning. Talk about your opponent. And if you draw more of the Charlotte Linlins, now you have a higher chance of winning, right? That it, it, That's kind of how mirror matches work sometimes, right? N not always. Skill does come into play. But if, if he just draws nothing but gas, yeah, okay. <laughs> it is what it is, right? You know, you tried. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to ramble too much longer about it. Um, I want to know what you guys think about this deck. If anyone knows about the, the list that just came up from Georgia, um, Number one, if it's even a real list. Like I said, one of my friends told me he said that he, that he believed that uh, there is a Charlotte Linlin black yellow deck in the top three in, a, in the most recent tournament in Georgia, which would have been around, uh, let me see what the date is, the 23rd. It would have been, uh, it was either the 22nd or 23rd. I can't remember exactly now. Uh, but <clears throat> if you have that list, please share it in the comment section below. If I find the list, I will share it in the comment section below. If anyone out there has been trying the black yellow, yellow list, please tell me what your thoughts are. For number one, on, on the lists that I shared and the list that you use, um, weaknesses, strengths, what to run against certain matchups that could help it out. Uh, what do you think of this CP package, guys? Is just absolutely a huge benefit to what I was running before. Adding the seven cost Charlotte Linlin, I feel like is just nothing but a benefit because a seven cost 8K body is big, guys. Seven cost on curve is a 9K with a 1K counter. You're giving up a 1K counter and 1K power to have that on play effect where you either gain a life or they lose a life. Both of them are, are winning for you, right? Both choices are winning. And then like if it's late enough in the game where maybe they don't have any life cards left where it seems dead... Uh, no problem. Discard it with your um, Charlotte Linlin leader ability, and you're gaining a life regardless and swinging for seven, right? It just, it you know, it has a lot of synergy there. Um, so, yeah. Well, all right, guys, uh, I think that is about it. I want, let, me th let me see if there's anything else I need to go over real quick. Um, yeah, pretty steady transition for the deck. This is part of building decks. Um, one thing I want to know is what do y'all think about uh, Charlotte Katakuri 8 cost versus Isho 8 cost? Uh, what do you think about running the Ice Ages? Bear in mind, Ice Ages trigger KOs up to uh, one of your opponent's characters with a cost of three or less. Or three or less, excuse me. So that's taking out things like, you know, um, what's he called? Uh, Zoro, most of the stuff in Law. You know, like that hits a lot of stuff, guys. A lot of stuff. Especially... See, that was the nice thing about running it in this list. I'm not saying this will happen all the time, okay, guys? But just bear with me. Listen to this example. 
So I 2k counter with a Khalifa earlier in the game. Okay, let's just say I 2k counter with a Khalifa earlier in the game. Okay, um, so now I block with my Bluno. I get my Khalifa back. She comes to play tapped. It's whatever, or arrested. But when she comes into play, you draw two and, and trash two, and you minus two to the cost of their character. Okay, that, <clears throat> excuse me. Remember, this is on your opponent's turn. So if you have like, not seen a Thunderbolt, or if you have not seen a Shockwave or Impact Wave, whatever, or an Ice Age or 16 Pistol, when you choose the minus two to their cost after doing the draw two, trash two, make sure you choose a target that might be able to hit one of these that normally wouldn't. For example, think if they have a, a seven cost character on the board. Say they have a, a, a Charlotte Linlin, okay? The seven cost Charlotte Linlin. And then Charlotte Linlin, let's just say, bashes into your character, your your uh, your uh, Blue No. You get Khalifa back minus two, and now she's a five. And if you rip a Thunderbolt off the next trigger that turn, <laughs> you can take out a seven cost, right? Or one thing that did happen when I was playtesting, <clears throat> I literally got Khalifa in the way I just said, where I blocked with Bluno late in the game, minus two to the cost of, to the to uh, my opponent's Zoro. And I ripped a six king pistol off the top to draw a card, KO Zoro, and all right, we're moving on. <laughs> it, it, it does have some potential. Because guys, that's an interaction we haven't really seen yet. Yes, we can minus cost on our turn, but minusing cost on our opponent's turn, drawing cards on our opponent's turn, that's a very big deal, guys. That's a very, very big deal. Uh, one thing I will say is, do, you know, I would not play Bluno unless there is, unless there is a card in the trash for him to grab. Because if they look at your trash and go, uh, you have nothing in your trash for him to grab, and then they jet pistol him and you got no value out of him, that is a bad place to be, guys. That is not the place you want to be. That defeats the whole purpose of running Bluno in the deck. Okay, so make sure you're uh, uh, taking consideration of that whenever, when, when you are playing, if, if you choose to try this deck out. Um, and like I said, you can move things around as much as you want to. You know, like, I think the core is pretty set. But if you think, like, okay, you know, I think four Blue Nose is a little crazy. Okay, well, maybe drop one down and go up, like, a Katakuri or, or go up a uh, Charlotte Cracker. Um, you know, kind of, you can mess around with it, whatever you, you know, however much you want to. But one other thing I want to mention is don't be afraid about how many counter, or excuse me, how many events we have in the deck. Because we are running 4, 8, 12, 14. That's actually not as crazy as it sounds, guys. Because, okay, number one, we know what Impact Wave does. And Six King Pistol is turning all of our big cost cards. Like, okay, not even just our big cost. It's turning our Kuzan, our Charlotte Katakuri 4 cost, our 7 cost Lin Lin, and our 10 cost Lin Lin, and our Sakazuki 6 cost. It's turning them into counters, right? That's a very big deal. Um, that's huge. So Impact Wave and Six King Pistol are just good. So the only cards that we really have to kind of quote unquote worry about are Thunderbolt and Ice Age. Well, guess what? You really don't have to worry about those because you can just pitch those with Sakazuki or you can pitch those with Charlotte Linlin's leader ability, right? There, there, there's a lot of stuff you can do or potentially Khalifa, right? If needed, you can draw two, trash two with Khalifa if your hand is just that dead. Because one thing I will say about Khalifa, it was nice getting her off Bluno, getting the, the interaction I said, because, okay, after that, that's a 4K body. You're swinging with that body, right? Like you now you can turn her sideways at 2K... Um, 2k and 3k searchers no problem it's like okay you're gonna save that because i only swung with a khalifa <laughs> you know what i mean that's very strong or you could put one or two dawn on her and start swinging at face very powerful um okay yep so i think i'm gonna end it there guys tell me what y'all think any recommendations uh any play testing you've had um i would love to hear about it guys i'd love to hear it um hope you guys enjoyed Till next time guys peace